Hi, I'm Mayor Warren, and we're continuing with our series of interviews of township departments and their leaders. Today, I'm with Chris Hartwijk, who is the business administrator of the city of Orange Township. <clears throat> Chris, being the business administrator, makes you the head of administration. Tell me, what does that mean? It means that in your absence, I run the day-to-day -day operations of the city and oversee the other five departments within the city. And you've been here how long now? since August of 2016. Just let, let's get your background out of the way already. You're a seasoned administrator. Um, you've practiced law. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. So I practiced law for 30 years. I have a law degree from Seton Hall University. Um, I ran my own law firm. Um, I ran the legal department of a very large public entity. Um, I was a partner in a large firm in Newark. Um, and then I had a consulting business that consulted with municipalities and uh, businesses that did uh, work within municipalities um, and with other governmental agencies. And then I came here. Tell me about the functions of your department, exactly what happens um, under your purview. As the head of administration, you have a wide swath of responsibility, persons, personnel, um, and accountability to the public. Sure. Um, so as the business administrator, I'm also the head of a department called administrative services. And administrative services includes, uh, among other things, a uh, consolidated purchasing system for the entire city, um, IT functions for the entire city, uh, human resources and personnel for the entire city, um, as well as the department heads reporting to me on a daily basis regarding their activities. That includes police, fire, public works, community service, finance, and law. Um, so we, for lack of a better uh, phrase, we have our fingers in every pie, um, whether we want to or not. Um, and uh, we have to make sure I often say that I'm, uh, my job is like being a mechanic. My function is to keep the engine running um, right. and running smoothly. Now you have, um, tell me the chain of command um, in the city for the business administrator. Sure, the chain of command very simply is the mayor um, to the business administrator. Um, and in the absence of the mayor dealing directly with a department head, they deal with me. And tell me about your role and function in connection with the city council, where you have some accountability as well. Sure. I have to do, uh, according to the code, the city council can ask me for reports. Um, I report to them to keep them abreast of the functions as well as the initiatives of the administration. Um, and finally, um, when the council adopts legislative action, it's incumbent upon the head of administration to ensure that that legislative action is enforced. As a result, you appear at council meetings, you appear at committee meetings and other meetings of the council. I uh, often appear, I appear at every finance committee meeting uh, of the city council. I appear at every city council meeting and occasionally I will appear at public works committee or other committees on request of the city council. Now, aside from all of that, um, that's officially required under the statute and the code, um, I also have you appearing at a number of meetings, um, including those in the community. Um, you've embraced that. Tell me why that's important to how you discharge your duties. Sure. Well, first, um, I feel as though I'm a part of the community. I was born here. Um, I moved away at a very young age, but all of my brothers went to school here. My mother was born here. Um, my uncles and my grandfather had businesses here. So the Orange community is not something that was strange to me or unfamiliar to me when I came to be the business administrator. Um, and you can't function as the administrator and represent the mayor and represent the city council and represent the city 
unless you're willing to go out into the community and roll up your sleeves and talk to the people and find out what their concerns are. Listen to those concerns, bring them back to the mayor if the mayor's not there, um, and which is very rare, I might add, um, and figure out what we have to do to make those constituents happy. You, and I don't want you to put in um, a petition for overtime, um, <laughs> but I call you nights, weekends, um, off hours, uh, whenever there's a constituency need that we have to focus on and get addressed, um, and you take those calls, um, tell me how is it that you're able to respond substantively um, it could be a water issue, it could be a garbage issue, it could be a quality of life issue, um, but you're able to um, touch, there must be some dedication from your department heads that you're able to get those problems solved. Absolutely. I mean, I honestly don't do everything. I may take the call, but my next call will be to a department head to say, this is the issue, what's the solution? And um, part of being able to respond and being available is also knowing what the departments are doing and what they're focused on. We have department head meetings. We communicate very frequently. It would be a rare day that I would go without speaking to each of the department heads at least once. Um, so there is a relationship, uh, both a working relationship and a personal relationship that we've developed at various levels um, between myself and department heads, between myself and the mayor um, between myself and the council and those relationships and communication uh, that's been established have been very helpful to actually responding to those needs. Now, under your purview, you have about 400 employees. Correct. Um, you uh, have major input in a $60 million budget, $60 million plus budget. Um, you have input into a board of education budget that's even larger. Um, you have input into about $200 million worth of development. Um, all of that can sometimes bring problems. What are the major problems that people uh, point out to you um, about the administration, about the employees, about anything about Orange? What problems um, do you get cited most frequently? Well, I think the biggest problem, and it's not necessarily something that people focus on, oftentimes the complaint will come in, well, so-and-so didn't get back to me uh, as quickly as I would like. And oftentimes that is what I call bandwidth. Um, there's a lot of things to do um, and somewhat limited resources within which to accomplish those goals and to meet those demands. Um, so um, the biggest issue that I have is communicating and de-escalating situations because I understand that constituents can, can be frustrated and upset um, and the goal is to get them to the point where they're satisfied. Right. Um, so that's one of the biggest challenges that we have. It doesn't come up every day, but when it does come up, it's a challenge. Um, in terms of what, what we do, the biggest, the biggest problem in my situation or the biggest challenge in my situation is the word no. Um, Oftentimes we want things that aren't in the budget. Oftentimes things will come up during the middle of the year that we haven't planned for in the budget. Um, and we have to be fiscally prudent and stick to that budget to the greatest extent possible. So we fi try to find ways to accommodate those unexpected or unanticipated demands, but we have to do so within the confines of fiscal responsibility. And that's something, that's a message that we have to get at all levels of government, including constituents, because sometimes those demands come from constituents as well as elected officials. You you you, you harped on uh, revenue and fiscal responsibility. I, I have to relay to you an issue that most taxpayers speak to me about. Um, taxpayers all the way down to the ones in my home. Um, taxes. Yes. Um, can we get a handle on taxes? Can we reduce taxes? And what has been your role in uh, our mission to try to attack the tax base by making sure that everyone pays their fair share and that the burdens get shifted off of the residential taxpayers onto um, the larger developers that we see coming in the city? So the, the goal and the focus um, has always been on the expense side. 
um, and trying to control expense. But what people don't focus on and what's as important, if not more important than the expense side is the revenue side. And the development efforts that the city has undertaken um, have a direct impact on revenue, a direct positive impact on revenue, because we are taking properties that are uh, underperforming um, or not performing at all right. and turning those into substantial revenue producing properties over a period of time. Um, it's a, it's, it takes a little bit of time and a lot of effort. Director Best has been exceptional at the development uh, process, um, but there is a major revenue component to that process, which is exceptionally important to the city. Furthermore, um, the goal is ultimately to stabilize taxes. Um, I would be uh, misleading anyone if I said that we could you know, reduce taxes nilly willy. Um, reduction of taxes is exceptionally difficult to do because labor costs go up every year. There's inflationary costs to products, goods, and services. Um, and there are certain contractual items that you just can't uh, get around, and those things are going to cause growth within your budget. Um, the goal is to grow revenues so that your growth in revenues exceeds your growth in expenditures. Right. And if you can do that, then you'll stabilize taxes. And that's the goal that you've had. That's the goal that we've worked at over the last five, six years that I've been here. Tell me, um, you know each department of this town and you've been a professional administrator for many years. What are your goals and efforts to improve those things that the public um, may deem to be unsatisfactory or to be troubling to them? Well, if we're a $70 million a year business, the constituents are our customers. And when they contact City Hall with an issue or a complaint, they need to have the level of customer satisfaction that they expect. Yes. Um, and so one of the major goals in dealing with all the department heads um, is to instill in them the notion that customer service is first and to instill in them that they must impart that message to all of their employees under their direct reports. Great. That's, that, that's very highly, highly important. Um, I'm going to ask you a number of quick questions. Um, you can give me quick answers or you can, you can pause to take more, um, but they're things that I'm sure are burning on the minds of all of our people. Um, garbage. Why can't it be picked up all the time, every time, and cleaned? <laughs> so garbage is something that we have uh, studied uh, over the last several years. Um, we're going to make some changes in our garbage contract. Our garbage is not picked up by municipal employees. Garbage is collected pursuant to a multi-year contract that's publicly bid. And in the public bidding process, you are constrained to go with the lowest responsible bidder. Um, that might not necessarily always be the If best. they don't do the job, why not fire them? There are performance clauses within the contract. Um, but you have to follow an extremely lengthy and uh, time-consuming, detail-oriented process pursuant to the contract. If citizens want to contribute to that process by reporting violations, what do they call? They call the Public Works Department. They speak to Ellie Serrano. And we'll they... put that number up on the screen for Public Works. And who is the person who manages that? That would be Marty Mays. Marty Mays, the director of public, you'll hear from him as well, but let's put that number up on the screen so the citizens know when to call. And so we have accumulated a number of complaints. Um, the most frequent uh, complaint we get is missed pickup. Um, and what should happen when they do it, when a missed pickup occurs? They should call immediately and we'll make sure that the pickup gets And the done. number on the screen is the one they should call? That's correct. Um, there are a number of There are a number of people who have housing challenges that are on various streets throughout the city of Orange Township, um, and it looks like they need mental counseling or some of the kinds of social services to be addressed. What are we doing to direct those people 
so that they can get the services they need. So the Department of Community Service maintains a resource guide and we have uh, the Department of Community Services led by Wendy Sykes. Um, we can post her number, but Please that- put that, that number's up on the screen as well. Um, and that would give us information regarding social service issues. Social service issues, housing issues, welfare issues. And they connect issues. you to the county as well? They connect you to the county, they can connect you to not-for-profits, churches, etc. There is Main Street. Um, we'd like to see more uniformity on Main Street and upgrade. I understand that at some point we're going to do an entire streetscape of Main Street. What's the status? So um, we have a fully developed plan for Main Street overhaul, which includes the new lighting, new materials, softening landscape, um, some hardscape improvements, um, plantings, etc. cetera. Um, the project was halted because of an increase in costs associated with COVID. Um, the project went from roughly a $5 million project to an $8.5 million project within a matter of months. So we have revisited that plan and are making some adjustments. We've also noticed that the cost of some materials has come down um, as we get away from COVID. Um, so we hope to be able to bring it within a reasonable budget. We've also applied for and are in the process of applying for certain grants um, that the project would be eligible for, including uh, a new DOT grant that we're working on currently um, for streetscapes. Um, so uh, we have an eye on, uh, a very focused eye on improving Main Street. We'd also like to create um, a small business grant uh, and loan program, low interest loan program for facade improvements the uh, urban enterprise zone has come back under this governor. Yes. Um, there will be urban enterprise funds available and we have to create a program for how those urban enterprise funds will be used. Um, eligible. Will the, will the, is there a way to include the public in that kind of determination when you lay out a plan of how to spend down uh, urban enterprise zone funds? Yes, absolutely. The, the, community's involvement and input is highly sought after in the urban enterprise fund process. And you're on Main Street, go down Main Street toward the East Orange Line, you have Military Park. So Military Park is undergoing a multi-million dollar renovation. Um, it has been funded by grant funds. Um, it will become a beautiful gateway entrance from the East Orange corridor into Orange. Uh, it's been many, many years before any improvements have been done to Military Park. Um, we've consulted with and are consulting with veterans in the area to make sure that their concerns are taken into account. Um, uh, the uh, if, they, if a veteran wants to call or a citizen wants to call regarding that project, who should they contact? They should contact Marty Mays. That number, once again, is up on the screen. Um, or Keith Pressey. Okay, Keith Pressey was part of the Parks Administration. That number should be on the screen as well. You contact them, um, leave them a message, they'll get back to you. If you can't, of course, they're going to put the mayor's number on. Certainly, we'll get back to you uh, with information that you might need. As Orange grows, it's concerned about um, affordability. Sure. How can, if I want to stay in Orange, if I want to move into Orange or stay in Orange, how can I afford it? Well, I think there's a couple of really important things that people need to understand about uh, the administration's approach to affordability. First of all, um, we have a very aggressive approach toward maintaining existing affordable housing. Um, some people may not realize, but an affordable housing complex um, may be affordable for 25 or 30 years, but then the owners may decide to convert that into a market rate facility. Um, we've been very aggressive in maintaining affordability in those complexes. So how do I maintain the value of my home? I'm a private homeowner. I want to maintain the value. The values in orange are at a, at a very decent rate at this point in order to maintain my value. What, how does the development side affect the value of my home? Sure, well, development affects 
supply and demand. Um, to the extent that we continue to um, have development at the rate and consistency that we've had, that's going to continue to add value to properties across the city. Um, we've seen an increase in property values over the last several years that people in Orange would have thought unheard of 10 years ago. Right. Um, so it's in that context as prices for properties go up that it becomes exceptionally important to uh, execute on the administration's goal of maintaining affordable projects as affordable. Um, and we've been very successful at that. Um, the development process has not taken any private uh, residences. Um, the, all of the projects- No eminent domain, no, no condemnation. No eminent domain, no condemnation. The development projects that have taken place all take place or are taking place on either vacant sites or former industrial sites that uh, no longer were supporting an industrial use. Um, two last questions, um, one of which includes opportunities for entrepreneurs and for those who want to be involved in the expansion and economic growth of Orange, uh, how do entrepreneurs get involved in the economic activity here? So as a first step, I would have them contact my office. Um, and we will connect them either with uh, various organizations within the city that promote entrepreneurship, um, various community groups. Um, there's the hub, there's hands. Uh, the city has been very active in supporting and directing entrepreneurs to the various uh, entities within the city that really have a focus on promoting entrepreneurship. Um, we like to be involved in that process as um, sort of a traffic cop, if you will, right. um, to make sure that the right people are in the right are in the same right. room talking to each other to best effectuate um, what they're both trying to do. And the number to contact your office for that purpose is is going to be on the screen as well. They'll contact you. Correct. Um, are are you still? involved i have developers come in all the time and i direct them through this process tell us about the process that you're still involved in where we're trying to marry um, developers uh, business persons entrepreneurs together as they venture out into orange sure um so first of all developers are encouraged to the extent that they're watching this developers are encouraged to contact my office or director best's office as an initial step before they do anything else um, we will meet with them, talk with them about what their vision is, what our vision is, um, and to the extent that there is some uh, uh, agreement on what that vision is, we will walk them through the process and the steps. Um, during that process, we will often um, suggest to a developer a potential tenant um, for a mixed-use development. Um, potential commercial tenant who brings jobs and, and resources to the exactly um, as you know we've been working um, with uh, some of the developers on trying to bring a supermarket to yes. the city um, and it's you know the supermarket business is a very challenging business development is a very challenging business so that's that's been a challenge um, but it's a challenge that we're making headway on yes um, and we have um, talk to various restaurateurs about uh, going into different buildings or projects that are under uh, development. Um, so, and we've talked to developers about having entrepreneur development space. Right. Um, so almost all of the developments that we're doing are mixed use developments and for, they present an opportunity for those types of interactions between the entrepreneur and business community and the development community in the city. Beautiful. Last question. Um, there is a big elephant um, in the city and I'm, we're gonna hear from um, Director Best in terms of planning for this project as well, but there are a lot of administrative parts and financial parts to it that we're dealing with right now. The hospital, former so, Orange Memorial Hospital site. 
So the, let's talk about some of the financial challenges first. Um, the, obviously, the biggest financial challenge is the lack of payment of taxes. Right. Um, we're currently carrying a three and a half million dollar tax title lien on our books, 90% of which is attributable to the hospital site, as you well know. Um, we're working through that. What process. are we doing? What are we doing to collect those monies? We're attempting to do what's called an assignment of tax sale certificates. What does that mean? Uh, it means that basically somebody comes in and buys the tax lien. Um, we get the cash. We get a hundred percent of lien. the cash. They get the lien. And they're enabled to foreclose on that lien immediately. And that cash goes to our coffers immediately? Correct. Um, and eliminates the tax title lien situation that I'm talking about that we've been carrying on our books. Right. Um, so that's the, that's the first issue. The second issue is that um, we have an owner of the property that really has no interest in developing the property. And so it's very important to the city to move that owner out and replace that owner. What with, power do we have to do that? Well, we have the power of persuasion. Um, and um, we have the power to introduce people um, to the developer. Um, and to the extent you legally can, just why don't you go over some of the two or three of the points uh, highlighted at the meeting we most recently had with the developer interests and those who want to come in to develop? Sure. Um, we have had a number of entities contact us regarding the development of the property. Um, Why can't they just come in and develop? What's the problem? Well, there there is the problem of ownership. Um, and the owner wants X amount of dollars for the property, and that X amount of dollars may be more than what the uh, uh, potential developer and owner wants. So it's private owner. Private owner. We don't own it. We don't own it. How much do they want for it? They want about 25 to $28 million. What do the potential buyers think the value is? Less than that. And while we don't own it, do we have any kind of financial interest in the property? We own a note, um, which is a primary lien on the property. Um, we undertook to purchase that note. What we advantage does that give us? Well, it gives us a number of advantages. First of all, it gives us a financial stake within the property um, and gives us effectively the right to say yes or no to a new developer because our note has to be paid off. Correct. Um, so not only do you have the tax lien as a primary lien, but you have the secondary lien, which is the note. If the current owner were to file bankruptcy, which has always been a concern of the cities, we would be a secured creditor um, with both the primary and secondary lien. So anything that would happen in terms of the transfer of that property through the bankruptcy process would have to go through so we have to be involved from the beginning to end exactly how close are we to securing a developer who will come in develop the site um we'll answer that question and also include in your answer uh, the concerns about the historic nature of the site sure um i think we're closer now than we've ever been uh to having a new owner who's we've met developers that have capacity we have met developers that have the capital capacity as well as the development experience capacity um, and this is a challenge site so you've got environmental conditions you have existing buildings you have historic preservation issues um, you have the fact that the site has been sitting vacant for 18 years um, tell so me about the historic preservation issues the entire site was declared to be a uh, on the National Historic uh, Register. There's a national National Historic Registry and the a state statewide, registry. and then we have a local and then we have historic local preservation historic Commission. preservation commission. Um, the state and national uh, uh, historic preservation entities will have the most to say about what can and cannot be built there what buildings can so that's a process where they have to present their development plans to the national organization and to the statewide body correct and get approval that's correct and they'll decide what buildings can stay or should stay what buildings can be demolished and then um, a potential developer has to figure into his plans um the renovation of a building instead of the demolition and that's building correct the exactly so so going back to your initial question where we are closer than we've been um, in years 
to identifying a qualified developer and marrying that qualified developer with an existing owner. Um, so um, I'm confident, um, I'm encouraged uh, that the efforts that we've put in as an administration that you've put in as the mayor uh, are going to bear fruit um, in terms of a transfer of that ownership from the current ownership to a new ownership that has the capacity both financially and from an experiential standpoint um, to develop that property. Well, next quarter, um, as we follow up on this, I want to bring that subject up again to see exactly where we are and see how we're progressing Great. in that regard. Um, can you give me a bunch of one word answers to the following questions? Um, most important mission for your office? Constituent satisfaction. Um, litter and debris throughout the town? Call and report it. Public safety. Making tremendous improvements. Programs for seniors and programs for our children. Programs for seniors. Um, we have a plethora. Um, programs for children. You and I just sat for the Junior Public Safety Academy parade uh, and the recreational programs, uh, the Summer of Excellence camp. Um, those are all programs that are enriching our children's lives. School board budget. Large. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, one that, that uh, people struggle with um, because the educational needs and the facility needs of the district are so great. Closing up with um, the administration's relationship with the Housing Authority and their efforts in providing uh, a fair number of decent, affordable housing for residents. Sure. You had asked before about, you know, affordability. Um, we do have a Housing Authority whose primary goal and purpose is to provide affordable housing. They've done that. I know they're working on Alexander Fork. Um, right. And uh, it's a scattered site development. Um, they've acquired properties. Um, they uh, have planning board approval. They have a redevelopment agreement and a pilot agreement with the city. Um, so I expect that that project will go forward within the near future. Looking forward to it. The library is governed by a library board separately uh, by statute, um, but any commentary on the library? Uh, it's a work in progress. Um, the, it's other than appointments to the library board, the uh, management, um, and day-to-day -day operations have to be completely separate from the city by statute. So, Except that the city does provide funding for those operations. We do. We collect the funding. Uh, there's a mandatory minimum uh, statutory amount that we have to collect, and we have been providing funding above that for all the years that I've been here. When you come back next time, you give us, uh, and maybe I'll focus on just two or three issues. Um, there are some targeted efforts that you're doing to, with the library for funding, for renovation, and so forth. Um, be prepared to discuss that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we've had Chris Hartwike, who's the business administrator for the city of Orange Township. Um, he is the person that runs the day-to-day -day operations. As I um, direct and give a mission and a theory about how government should be run, it's Chris's job to implement it and carry it out. He's been good in terms of responding to constituents. He's knowledgeable. Um, he's able to uh, bounce ideas off of each other. It's been a pleasure to work with you, Chris, and your years of experience to benefit the city of Orange Township. It's been fun. Thank you, sir. Thank you.